Hey guys, welcome back to Portal of Wisdom. I'm back today with another story for you, and this is a good one. So if you are new to the channel, like and subscribe and click that little post notification bell so you can get alerted when I post any of my new videos. And now on to today's topic. This is great. So I know some of you may be into NASCAR racing. Some may not be. But even if you're not into NASCAR racing, this story is pretty crazy and pretty funny. So there is this gentleman. His name was L.W. Wright, and he's been titled as the D.B. Cooper of NASCAR racing. So who was L.W. Wright, you ask? Well, there is a whole story that goes along uh, with this whole uh, situation, and it's pretty hilarious. So back in April of 1982, there was a gentleman named William Dunaway of Hendersonville, Tennessee. So he contacted the Nashville newspaper to promote a driver named L.W. Wright who was entering the Winston 500 race under Music City Sports. So L.W. Wright said that he was a 33-year-old driver with 43 NASCAR Bush Grand National Series starts. So he said he was sponsored by country music artists Merle Haggard and T.G. Shepard. So to participate, Wright submitted a check for $115 to NASCAR for a competition license. And the sanctioning body was a little skeptical of his background at first. But, but it was a right-to-work state, and the way the laws were, were written... It required NASCAR to go ahead and let him race if he could pay the fees and provide a capable car. So, the next part goes like this. As, as part of Music City Racing, there is a few gentlemen here that need to then get their licenses. So, um, Lloyd Barber and Rick Wright, they applied for driver's permits for NASCAR. And uh, William Dunaway, Freddie Case... Willis Judd, Michael Smith, and Ellis White, they requested their mechanics licenses as all like part of the crew. So then L.W. Wright, I think he doesn't have all the funds he needs yet, so he approached Bernie Terrell, who was the head of Nashville-based Space Age Marketing. He approached him for assistance buying and sponsoring a car. So... Terrell, or Terrell, I don't know how you say his last name, he gave him $30,000 for a vehicle and gave him a semi-truck and trailer to haul it in and also gave him $7,500 for expenses. I don't know if it was because Space Age Marketing had like all the logos and stuff on the semi-truck and it was going to be on the car and all this stuff if they felt this was a great, you know, a great deal, lots of uh, exposure or whatever the case happened to be. I don't know those details for sure, but probably a situation like that. So he takes the money that they gave him. He bought a Chevy Monte Carlo from Sterling Marlin for $20,700. And he wrote him a uh, check. Well, he gave him $17,000 in cash and then wrote him a check for the difference. And Sterling Marlin was a little suspicious and followed him to Talladega to be his crew chief. So L.W. Wright then spends... $1,500 to $1,800 on uh, Goodyear tires and $1,200 to driver Travis Tiller for some more parts and $168 to Southern Textile Association for his racing jackets for, for him and his crew. So now it, it goes like this. L.W. Wright, he did a newspaper interview to promote his entry into the Winston 500. He also later admitted, I think shortly before the race, when they started to question his race history, he admitted that he had participated in some sportsman class races that were held at Grand National tracks, but never participated in a Grand National race. So on race day... Sterling Marlin questions his race ethics and behavior a bit more and, and said that uh, 
he asked some questions that he should have already known if he had the credentials that he said he had. So it ended up in practice, L.W. Wright, he does crash his car in practice, but he's able to make repairs to the car and he's still able to race on race day. So during the race, though, you know, he gets going. I think he was placed toward the back of the pack and uh, he was forced to exit after 13 laps for being too slow and finished 39th. I think I think somewhere I saw that maybe something happened to his engine, which caused him to be uh, a bit slow. So after 13 laps, he exits off. He ends up finishing 39th place. And that paid him a prize money check of $1,545. So after the race, he disappeared and left his car at the raceway where Terrell was able to recover it. And it was later revealed that all of his checks that he had wrote, they all bounced or they were invalid. So NASCAR then arranges these arrest warrants for him. And Terrell hired a private investigator to try to find him. And no one has ever seen or heard from this L.W. Wright since. So can you imagine this? I mean, no one knows where he is now and uh, or who he was because obviously that's probably not his, his real name. Can you imagine a, a few guys sitting at the bar and they're watching some NASCAR and one says to the group of his friends, man, I can drive just as fast as those drivers and control my car and place in a NASCAR race. You know, one of his other friends says, no way, Bobby Joe, those guys are professionals. Then Bobby Joe says, just watch me. I'll get into a race and I'll show you guys. It could have been something just as simple and hilarious as that. But, uh, you know, it could still be a huge inside joke to that group of friends. But uh, I don't know. Um, I wonder if we'll ever know who L.W. Wright really was. So at this point, that happened in 1982. We still don't know who L.W. Wright was. And uh, anyhow, so that's my hilarious story for the day. Like and subscribe if you like these kind of stories.